One of the big questions that often comes up when people are first getting into WordPress is what is the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com? They are different things, which I know is just incredibly confusing. Um, so I definitely want to take a moment to address this and hopefully put this question to bed once and for all before we get into the actual course material. So WordPress.com, which we're looking at here, is a fully hosted service that you can sign up for to build a blog or a website without having to manage the underlying technology yourself. WordPress.org, on the other hand, is home to the free WordPress software that you can install on your own web server. Now, there are pros and cons to both of these systems, and I've seen a lot of different explanations, but none of them illustrates the point quite as well as this old blog post from the Daily Post blog on WordPress.com. So I'm just going to read this excerpt for you, and hopefully this should get the point across. So it says, having a blog or website here on WordPress.com is a bit like renting an apartment in a complex. You don't have to worry about the pipes freezing in winter, you don't have to mow the backyard, and you don't have to fix the dishwasher if it breaks. All of that is your landlord's job. But on the other hand, you can't install skylights, knock down a wall to combine two rooms, or rent out your spare bedroom without the landlord's permission. Similarly, here at WordPress.com, we support your site and we take care of all the updates, the backups, and the security. But since all of our users share this platform, we don't permit you to use plugins since they can introduce security risks or outside themes. And there are a few terms of service that we require our bloggers to follow to keep WordPress.com nice for everybody. When you move to a self-hosted WordPress site, it's like buying your own house. You can knock down the walls or build an extension. You can rent out your garage for practice space to a local band. You can keep a lion in the backyard. But if your heat goes out in the middle of winter, you have to fix it or hire someone who can. If you self-host, you can install all the plugins you want, but if one of them breaks your site, you have to figure out how to fix it. Luckily, WordPress.org has a great support forum with many knowledgeable and helpful volunteers. You're also responsible for performing routine updates and backing up your content, but the only rules you're bound by are your own. So that's the end of the quote from the Daily Post blog on WordPress.com. Really appreciate that explanation. It illustrates the point really well. Uh, WordPress.com, definitely like renting an apartment in a complex. You know, you, you have a free version where you can create a website for free, but you have a lot of limitations to that. You're going to have advertising on your site that you don't necessarily get a cut from. And, you know, there's going to be certain things that you can and can't do. And then you have all these plans. You've got your personal plan, your premium plan, your business plan, and your e-commerce plan. Each of these, as they get more expensive, unlocks uh, more potential for what you can do with your website. But on the base level plans, there are a ton of limitations, and you're not going to be able to do a lot of the things that we talk about in this course. On the other hand, if you use WordPress.org or the self-hosted version of WordPress, that's the same everywhere. You can take that to any web host, whether it's a budget web host or an expensive web host, and you can do essentially the same thing everywhere. You own your site. You have full control over it. You can do whatever you want with it. And then if you ever want to change web hosts, you can do that very easily. You can just take your existing WordPress site, and move it to somewhere else, move to a different web hosting company, and you're good to go. So that would be the primary reason that I recommend WordPress.org. It just allows for a level of control and flexibility that you can't get from WordPress.com or any other hosted service like Wix or Squarespace, things like that. So that is what we're going to be focusing on in this course, the self-hosted version of WordPress that you can get from WordPress.org. And as we move forward, we're going to take a look at exactly how to set it up.